Well, good morning and uh, welcome to this our online service on the 24th of May. We're so pleased that you have tuned in and that you are going to be part of this gathering together, even though we're in different places, gathering to worship God together. I'm Amanda Featherstone and I am the Vicar of St Mary's Church Withal. Uh, just to say that uh, today um, we were going to have one of our uh, readers and dear friends, Dave Darcy, leading our service. Uh, but sadly, Dave's dad's been really poorly this week uh, and so Dave's not able to lead us. Uh, and so we do pray for his dad, Bill, uh, and for Dave and all the family. And uh, our thoughts and prayers are with them. And so just to say bear with us as well, um, I've put on the same clerical shirt so that there is a sense of continuity, uh, but I was, uh, and I am, preaching this morning and when it comes to that slot you'll see me like uh, come in and introduce myself as if uh, this is the first time you're seeing me uh, and that's because that's what we had planned so uh, please bear with us with that uh, this morning. On uh, the 21st of May this year, that's just Thursday of this week just gone, it was the point in the church calendar where we focus on the ascension of Jesus. That is, after Jesus has risen from the dead, he's got his disciples around him and he ascends into heaven. And so because this is the uh, nearest Sunday to that, we're going to focus on this topic of ascension. And Coming to the beginning of this service, I just want you to think about the fact that Jesus is the ascended Lord and he is now seated at the right hand of God and worthy of all our praise. And so I'd like to start with a verse from Revelation, uh, Revelation 5.13. This is the last book of the Bible and it's a vision that John has. And it's a vision of Jesus seated on the throne. And uh, Jesus here is referred to as the Lamb. Then I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and on the sea and all that is in them saying, to him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb, be praise and honour and glory and power for ever and ever. It was a vision of John's, but it is the truth of now that Jesus sits on the throne and is worthy of our praise. So let's just take a short moment to consider the exalted Lord Jesus. And now, please, if you wish, join in with me with this opening prayer. Lord, may we lift our eyes to you now. Jesus, you are worthy of all worship and praise. So may we worship you now, bringing you all honour and glory. Though we are in separate places, may we be joined together in lifting high your name. Amen. One of the ways we exalt and lift high the name of Jesus is in songs of praise. And we're going to hear, and you can join in with the words if you wish, the song Lion and the Lamb. Uh, it's two names used to describe Jesus. And Jesus is on the throne and every knee will bow before him.
Lord Jesus, we do bow the knee before you and we do declare that nothing can stop the Lord Almighty. And so would you increase our faith. Amen. In a moment, uh, Zach is going to bring our reading from the Bible, this account of the Ascension. And what we're going to hear in that is how uh, Jesus was gathered with his disciples and then the disciples watched Jesus go upwards, taken into the glory of heaven. And so to uh, get our minds focused on this uh, going upwards, I set last week a St Mary's Taskmaster Challenge of watching something go upwards. And so before we hear that Bible reading, um, we are going to see the two joint winners, one from Sarah and Graham Yo, and one from Dave and Pete Walters. Enjoy our Taskmaster joint winners. Now to get it going is a few scraps of paper. This looks perfect, a few squiggles on it, should be fine. See you later. Well it took some starting but it's really going now. Hello? Uh -huh. Hello. Hello. Dad, there's something I need you to send to university immediately. Right. My proof of Cole's law. Right. Cole's law? Cole's law? Isn't that a shredded cabbage, carrot and mayonnaise foodstuff? There's proof some existed at lunchtime, but I'm afraid I finished it. No, Dad. It's a complex astrophysics theorem I left on the table. Ah. Oh. Did it have a cover sheet that's covered in squiggles? Those squiggles are mathematical symbols, but yes, it did. <laughs> in which case, uh, I'm watching it going upwards. Such great fun to see and uh, thank you for all the entries this week. We had quite a few and so they'll be put together in one video which you can click on to see after this service. Well that was some um, fun and uh, now let's turn to the really important watching Jesus go up into heaven and uh, over to Zach to read that from the Bible and then I'm going to bring us our talk for today. The reading today is taken from Luke chapter 24 verses 44 to the end of the chapter. He said to them, This is what I told you while I was still with you. Everything must be fulfilled that is written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms. Then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. He told them, This is what is written. The Messiah will suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and repentance for the forgiveness of sins will be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. I am going to send you what my Father has promised, but stay in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. When he had led them out to the vicinity of Bethany, he lifted up his hand and blessed them. While he was blessing them, he left them and was taken up into heaven. Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with great joy. And they stayed continually at the temple, praising God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I hope you're doing well. Um, and it's a real privilege for me to uh, come now and speak on this passage. Thanks very much to Zach for reading it to us from the end of Luke's Gospel. 
and of course uh, from every aspect of this service what uh, we're aware of is that what we're focusing on today is the ascension the ascension of Jesus into heaven with his disciples watching he had died on the cross rose again he'd appeared to many people and now he ascends into heaven and uh, what Zach read to us uh, included uh, the response of those disciples that saw this. Verse 52, it says this, Then they worshipped him and returned to Jerusalem with a great joy, and they stayed continually in the temple, praising God. The outcome for the disciples immediately, in terms of the ascension, um, was worship, it was great joy and then continual praise of God. It was an amazing event. It was the culminating event of Jesus's life on earth. It was the triumphant finale. It was a monumental moment. And yet, I don't know whether you'll agree with me, but it seems it can get a bit neglected. We talk about Jesus's birth, his death, his resurrection. But do we always include his ascension? Well, we know that we give a lot of attention to Jesus's arrival. I wonder what your memories of the celebrations of Christmas are. And boy, does that seem a long time ago. But we celebrate with great gusto the arrival of Jesus but not so much his leaving. We give a lot of attention to his death and resurrection as we celebrate Easter. But here we are, 40 days on from that at the Ascension. And is that something that gets a bit neglected? Well, maybe it's because we get holidays for Christmas and Easter and not for Ascension. At a church I was part of previously, there was a guy there of very deep faith in Jesus. He'd been a long distance lorry driver and he also enjoyed motorcycling. And he had a great phrase that has stuck with me. He had a really down to earth faith and he often asked, well, where does the rubber hit the road? He was really asking, well, what is the meaning of this and what difference does it make? And that's how I'd like to explore the ascension today. Jesus's arrival, his birth, makes a great difference. It shows that God came to be with us and that God initiated that rescue plan to restore our relationship, our friendship with him. Jesus's death makes a huge difference. It shows that the perfect one dying on the cross has dealt with our sin so that we can be forgiven, hence including a confession in our service earlier. And Jesus's resurrection, his coming back to life, shows that death has been defeated. Death has been overcome and through belief in Jesus, we can live forever. So what of the ascension? What does it mean and what difference does it make? Where is the rubber hitting the road? Well, if you're joining us online today because you're still uh, exploring what the truth of Jesus is, then the Ascension helps put that piece in place of who he is. If you're new to faith, then exploring the Ascension helps put in some building blocks of understanding. And if you've been a follower of Jesus for a long time, Maybe looking at the ascension is a challenge to see what does it mean and how does it fit in with day to day faith. OK, so I've only got a shorter time online than I would have in church. And so I can't say that I'm outlining everything that the ascension uh, stands for and achieves and means and so uh, if you do want to explore it more uh, I'd happily talk to you and direct you to some of the things I've been reading and listening to but let's have a look at some core aspects of what the ascension means. Firstly then the ascension shows the completion of Jesus's work on earth. It shows 
the completion of his work. In John's Gospel, chapter 4, verse 34, it says this. Jesus is speaking. My food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work, to finish the work that God gave Jesus to do. And then further on in John 17, it says this. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And of course, on the cross, Jesus cried out, it is finished. The ascension shows that Jesus completed the work that his father had given him to do. We understand from uh, the time spaces that uh, Jesus died at the age of 33. It very much looks like a, a, a life cut short, a death come too early. But actually what the Bible shows and what the ascension brings is confirmation that Jesus completed the work that God gave him to do. I'm actually recording this uh, with a tripod uh, on our dining table and the tripod stands on a jigsaw. When I came down this morning, there was still probably about another 45 pieces to do. All the grass. It's now finished. I can't show you it under the tripod, but it is completed. A member of our household has worked hard this morning and completed that jigsaw. And we can see a bigger picture. It is encouraging, assuring that Jesus completed the work his father gave him to do. We know, therefore, that we can trust everything he is and that he said. And in John 17, reading on from the verse I read, it says, And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. And so Jesus returns to heaven and returns to the glory that he had before no longer limited by a human body, fully restored in the glory he has. So, it's a completion of Jesus' work on earth. Secondly, what the ascension shows us is that the next phase can come. And that is the sending of the Holy Spirit. We've talked in our series of Encounters with Jesus about how uh, the disciples would have been in turmoil about his death and then shocked by his resurrection. But before uh, his death, he started talking to them about the fact that it is better for you that I should go. Well, they couldn't understand that. How could it be better for them that he would go? Jesus said, if I go, then we will be able to send the counsellor, the comforter, the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I have been with you, but the Holy Spirit will be in you. He said, it's going to be better for you that I have gone. That's because the disciples had had Jesus with them, but now they would have the spirit of Jesus in them. And we're going to look at the gift and the, the pouring out of the Holy Spirit next week at Pentecost. The ascension shows that this next chapter can come, the sending of the Holy Spirit, that we might have power. And for us, living in the 21st century, well, of course, Jesus was in one place at one time. But now the spirit of Jesus is with each and every one of us, wherever we are, because he ascended into heaven and the Father has sent the Holy Spirit to us. That's great news that Jesus is with you and with me, wherever we are. And that's one of the things that the ascension, followed by Pentecost and the pouring out of the Holy Spirit has brought about. Thirdly then, the thing that the ascension does is it marks the passing of the responsibility of making Jesus known onto his followers. While Jesus was on earth, of course, he made himself known. He went about healing and teaching and performing more miracles. 
and he did have a couple of test runs of getting his followers uh, to make him known. And he sent out the disciples and he sent out uh, a group of wider disciples, sending out them in pairs of the 70 or the 72. But once Jesus returns to heaven, the responsibility of making him known is passed on to his followers. Uh, Zach read us the uh, account of the Ascension from the end of Luke's Gospel, uh, but Luke actually writes a second book. He writes the Acts of the Apostles and what Luke does is uh, he uses what he ended with in Luke to start his other book, Acts, and he gives an account uh, of uh, the Ascension of Jesus going up into heaven and uh, it, he records Jesus saying this to his disciples. And you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, in all Judea and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. This responsibility is passed on to us. And that word responsibility, we can think, ah, oh, um, but it's an exciting thing. And actually it gives us purpose. And reading that verse, that Jesus is going to be known, and he is being made known to the ends of the earth, the fact that empowered by the Holy Spirit, we can be part of that is such an adventure. Okay, fourthly and finally then, what does the ascension bring about? Well, Jesus is now seated at the right hand of God. Jesus is seated in heaven. And so that means and uh, brings about for us as followers various things. Uh, firstly, it brings about our worship. There's a, a great passage in Philippians, which actually is a, an old hymn, and it says, at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and everyone will proclaim that he is Lord. He's seated at the right hand of God and every knee in the end will bow before him. But we have the opportunity to praise him now and declare that he is the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Another aspect uh, to uh, take in, in the fact that Jesus is seated in heaven, is that he is there now preparing a place for us. There's a passage that I'm often asked to use at funerals, it's John 14, and it says, In my Father's house are many rooms, says Jesus, and I am going there to prepare a place for you. Jesus is in the heavenly realms. And because he's conquered death, he is there preparing a place for those who believe in him. Also, the fact that he's seated in heaven means that he has started his high priestly ministry. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about the fact that we have a great high priest. Therefore, since we have a great high priest who has gone through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to the faith we profess. We have a great high priest who can understand everything we go through because he came to earth, but he's now in heaven and we can raise our prayers to him. Our worship, our prayers and knowing he has prepared a place for us. Well, I've outlined four things there. And uh, maybe you'd like to listen to this again, I dare to say, and actually look at each of those passages that I've referred to in more detail. I'm aware today that uh, I haven't bought uh, a, a story or something I'm thinking about. I've not related it to coronavirus because today I wanted us to focus on the Bible and to have some clear teaching and understanding of what the ascension means. And I do hope that that is a blessing to you as you ponder it again. And do go to Acts chapter 1, the first 11 verses to read Luke's second account of it. So at this point in our service, we're going to come to what's called a creed. And a creed is just saying what we believe. But actually today we're going to do that through song. And it's a new song that Ria's going to teach us and it has signs with it. It's called I Believe. So just listen or join in with the words or join in with the signs. And then after that, Jan and Ria are going to lead us in our prayers. Let us declare our faith together. So 
starts with, I believe in you, Jesus. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you came from heaven to earth. I believe you showed us who God is and how to live. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you died and rose again. I believe you've opened up the way to God in heaven. And I believe your spirit's here with me, giving me the power to change the world. So I'm living my life for you, Jesus, wherever you lead us, I'm going to follow you. I'm giving it everything I've got for you, for the things I believe in. I'm living my life for you. Jesus, wherever you lead us, I'm gonna follow you. I'm giving it everything I've got for you, for the things I believe in. I believe in you, Jesus. I believe you came from heaven to earth. I believe you showed us who God is and how to live. Jesus, I believe you died and rose again. I believe you've opened up the way to God in heaven. And I believe your spirit's here with me, giving me the power to change the world. So I'm living my life for you, Jesus, wherever you lead us, I'm gonna follow you. I'm giving it a Thing I've got for you, for the things I believe in. I'm living my life for you, Jesus. Wherever you lead us, I'm gonna follow you. I'm giving it everything I've got for you, for the things I believe in. I'm living my life for you, Jesus. Wherever you lead us, I'm gonna follow you. I'm giving it everything I've got for you, for the things I believe in. I'm living my life for you. Jesus, wherever you lead us, I'm gonna follow you. I'm giving it everything I've got for you, for the things I believe in. Good morning, everyone. Shall we pray together? We celebrate today the gift of your Holy Spirit, which you poured on the believers on the day of Pentecost and which is our blessing today. Lord, we thank you for the transforming work of your Holy Spirit in our lives. May the burning fire of your Holy Spirit refine and renew us so that we will never be the same. May we serve you faithfully in praise, prayer and loving service to others. We come to you today Dear Lord, in our weakness, but in your strength, we stand on your promises and claim them for the world around us as well as for ourselves. So we put our faith in you and your power right now. Creator God, you made the world and you made everything in it. At this time, the world is still reeling due to the impact of the coronavirus awaiting and wondering when it will end. We feel a bit like the disciples in the upper room just prior to Pentecost, waiting. What next? We can do little, but we can pray like them. And so we do now. We do so because you, Lord, are the God of the impossible. The coronavirus dominates our headlines but it can hide other consequential things that are happening in our country too. In despair, a rising tide of people are trying to find outlets in activities that are harmful. As well as ignoring the guidelines of social distancing, also some are turning to increased alcohol, others to online gambling, and sadly, some violence is rising both in their homes and on the streets as well. We thank you also for the generosity and kind hearts of volunteers 
who help sacrificially with food banks across our city to provide food for more and more people who find themselves in the position of food poverty. In the meantime, our voices join with the many others in praying and thanking you for all the work that people are doing battling on the front line and the countless other key support workers throughout the UK who go on day after day diligently doing their jobs. Drivers, supermarket workers, teachers, bus drivers, refuse collectors and so many more of people who work with these unseen jobs. Please give them your love, joy and peace and protection and encouragement and the extra strength to persevere. Unshakable God, you are our ever-present help in times of trouble. Amidst all the isolation, grief and fear caused by the crisis, renew in us your peace, restore your perspective and reveal to us your presence. Merciful God, we bring to your loving, tender care those who are suffering with COVID-19, those who are ill or in pain, knowing that your everlasting arms are there to hold us safe whatever part of life's journey we are on. We pray that you will comfort the thousands of families who have had their loved ones taken away from them too soon. Pour your peace and comfort on their lives. We pray, pray for the people of Uganda battling with severe flooding, locusts and not to say the least COVID-19. Also, also along with the virus both India and Pacific Islands have suffered awful cyclones. This has forced the consequent refugees to be crammed into shelters where it's impossible to social distance. Heavenly Father, we pray for those in these countries where COVID-19 is just another affliction on top of many other trials, especially those such as Afghanistan and other countries who are riddled with poverty, hunger, corruption and violence. It's difficult for us to pray knowledgeably in our circumstances but you Lord are right there now and you Father are the one for whom nothing is impossible. Stretch out your hand over these situations and please bring an end to their suffering. On a more local level here in Hollywood and Withal we pray Jesus that you will breathe on us with the breath of life as a church. We pray that your Holy Spirit's fire would ignite something wonderful here that will spread far and wide. Enabled and led by you, Lord, may we be a beacon of hope, love and light shining in and throughout our community. We pray now, Lord Jesus, our friend, for those close to us, for those who are unwell, please be their healer and giver of wholeness. For those who are grieving, please wrap your arms around them and be their loving comforter. For those who are anxious, please, pre please be their Prince of Peace, filling them with calmness. For those who are lonely, please Jesus be their close friend. Heavenly Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Join with me as we say the Lord's Prayer together and you can join in with the signs if you would like. Our Father in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Amen. And so our notices for this week. So we have looked today at Ascension and we're looking forward to Pentecost. That period between the 21st and 31st of May is termed Thy Kingdom Come. And there is a call across this nation and globally to prayer. And St Mary's Church are joining in with that with a 24 hour period of prayer. And so I just want to say you guys are great and thank you so much for signing up so that we're able to cover uh, that 24 hours of prayer. And uh, I just pray that we'll all be blessed through that. And if you do uh, have any comments or uh, things that have struck you, ways you think God's uh, been speaking, then please do get in touch with me. And so we're praying uh, from 10 a.m. on Wednesday to 10 a.m. on Thursday. And uh, to bring that time of prayer together, we're going to have a uh, Zoom prayer meeting. So do contact Kathy if you'd like the details so that you can join in with that. And also contact Kathy if you'd still like to sign up to be praying in an hour slot during our 24 hours of prayer. Secondly then, uh, an announcement of the next St Mary's Taskmaster Challenge. And uh, to be with us by noon on Wednesday, the challenge of a video of less than one minute. Could you record an account of that first Pentecost? Record an account of Pentecost. Now you'll be able to read about it in the Bible in Acts chapter two. And I just need to say there's a part about uh, uh, flames of fire landing on each person's head. Please, health warning, don't play with fire. Please be careful, but I'd really love to receive your videos by Wednesday at noon. It's always great in our services to be able to see what the children and young people are doing. And even though we're online, we're continuing to do that. And to just show you, having had that great song earlier, I believe, with the signs, uh, there's another song being worked on called Send Us Out. And within that song, there's going to be bits of our children and young people uh, dancing and signing and being involved. And so we're going to use that on Trinity Sunday on the 7th of June. And we really look forward to that. A final prayer and blessing. May God the Father who made you watch over you. May Jesus who died for you be near to you. May the Spirit who gives life live in your heart. And may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Waiting expectantly for the promised Holy Spirit, go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. So glad you've tuned into this uh, service today and uh, I hope it's been a blessing to you. Do get in touch with me at any point and uh, do click the link that come up after this service to watch all those Taskmaster videos. But it's an exciting week ahead as we engage as a church in these 24 hours of prayer and as we look ahead to next Sunday and our celebration of Pentecost. Have a day, great week and take care.